السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو انادر کمپیوٹر سائنس لیکچر آئی ہوپ یو گائز آر ڈوئنگ فائن سو وی ور ڈسکسنگ سیکشن نمبر فائیو دی انٹرنیٹ اینڈ اٹس یوزز آف کمپیوٹر سائنس ٹو لیول سلیبس ٹو ٹو ون زیرو وی ہیڈ پریویسلی ڈسکسڈ سیکشن نمبر فائیو پوائنٹ ون انٹرنیٹ اینڈ ڈبلیو 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 so today we are going to start section number 5.2 that is digital currency digital currency is a form of currency that is available only in a digital or electronic format it is also called digital money e money electronic money electronic currency or cyber cash Digital currencies have a utility similar to that of physical currencies just like a physical currency uh, they can be used to purchase goods or pay for services they also have uh, some restricted use among certain online communities such as gaming websites gambling websites and some of the social media networks they also enable instant trans transactions that can be seamlessly executed across borders sending or receiving money from one country to another is very easy and usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes or maximum half an hour for instance it is possible for a person located in the usa to make payments in digital currency to a counterparty residing in singapore or malaysia or anywhere in the world provided that they are both connected to the same network they can be centralized or decentralized now uh so uh, like we just discussed digital currencies can be of two types either it can be a centralized system or a decentralized one so first of all we are going to discuss centralized system that is known as cbdc central bank digital currency now a central bank or in some countries it is also known as a state bank is the bank which uh, over which is uh, owned by a government and it basically overlooks all the other banks in a country and is responsible for producing new currency notes new coins and so on in simple terms cbdc is short for central bank digital currency it is an electronic form of central bank money that citizens can use to make digital payments or store values means keep their cash safe inside a vault or an or a wallet a cbdc of should have three main elements it should be available digitally or it should be a digital currency it should be issued or it should be backed up by a central bank and it should be universally or globally accessible for example as you can see a canadian lumber company sends the payment through their account in the in a canadian bank and sends the payment on to a canadian payment system and from there it goes to the central bank of canada and from there it would go to the central bank of france and from there it would go on to the french payment network and it through which it is going to end up into the bank account of a french manufacturer in a local french bank and this process is hardly going to take around 15 minutes maximum 15 minutes uh, normally this uh, takes around 2 to 5 minutes and that's it whereas if you try to send money physically from one country to another it can take uh, that that is commonly known as bank wire so so it can take around uh, something like 2 to 3 business days or more so this was centralized digital currency and other type of digital currency we have is decentralized digital currency and a very famous form of digital currency of such type is known as cryptocurrency which is a decentralized network based on proof of work means you have to show some proof that you have done some work which is given by the network and then you can earn that money 
Examples of crypto includes Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, Leocoin and so many more. Now cryptocurrency uh, which is in short known as crypto as just crypto as well it is a form of currency that exists digitally or virtually and it uses cryptography to secure transactions. Cryptocurrencies don't have a central issuing or regular uh, regulating authority instead they use a decentralized system to record transactions and issue new units or uh, you can say issue new coins it is a peer-to-peer -peer system means it is a system that connects one person directly with another that can enable anyone anywhere to send and receive payments it works something like this in a traditional uh, financial system means centralized banking system you send the money it goes into your bank then it sends it to another mm, country through one of the famous payment processors Venma, Mastercard, Visa, PayPal, OneLink and so many more basically some central bank is uh, one or more central banks are involved over here and then the bank of receiver finally gets that money and then puts that money into the receiver's bank account whereas in the decentralized financial system such as that of a uh, cryptocurrency you send the money it goes onto a network and after validation the receiver receives it into his or her wallet simple is that instead of being uh, physical money carried around and exchanged in the real world cryptocurrency payments exist purely as digital entries to an online database describing specific transactions cryptocurrencies do not exist in any form physically whereas centralized digital currencies can exist both as physical and digital currency when you transfer cryptocurrency funds the transactions are recorded in a public ledger that is known as blockchain Cryptocurrency is stored in digital wallets. You need to download and install or create an online wallet in order to hold on or uh, you can say store the cryptocurrency. The first ever cryptocurrency was Bitcoin which was founded in 2009 by Satoshi Namekaze and uh, we still don't really know who that guy was but he gave us a very good system of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and up till now bitcoin is at the top of the chart it is the most uh, you can say uh, most expensive and it is the best known currency in the uh, cryptocurrency in the world so far so how does cryptocurrency work cryptocurrencies run on a distributed public ledger that is called blockchain a ledger is basically an accounting term it uh, refers to a format or a page that records multiple financial transactions a record of all transactions is updated and held by currency holders units of cryptocurrencies are created through a process called mining no matter whichever crypto you are buying or you are holding if you want to create new units for that currency then you need to do mining the a mining is a process which involves using computer power basically idle computer power to solve complicated mathematical problems and uh, when you solve those comp mathematical problems then as a reward the network gives you some of the coins or generates some coins of that cryptocurrency you but if you don't want to do mining you because it stresses your computer a lot and it can cause hardware mal malfunction so what you can do is you can buy or sell cryptocurrency from brokers from uh, from websites known as crypto exchanges and you can store and spend those cryptographic uh, those uh, cryptocurrency by storing them into one of the cryptographic wallets there are many wallet providers depending upon what type of currency you would like to use for Bitcoin there is a different wallet for Monero there is a different wallet and so on blockchain blockchain is a type of shared database that stores data in blocks that are then linked together via cryptography hence creating a chain of blocks that is known as blockchain 
as new data comes in it is entered into a fresh block once the block is filled with data it is then chained on to the previous block which makes the data chain together in chronological order if a hacker tries to alter transaction of a block its hash will be altered hence all blocks after that will be lost and the chain will be broken thus this system is considered hack proof the first block in a chain doesn't link to a previous block and it is known as genesis block genesis is a greek word that basically means origin so uh if you are not familiar with the word hash then there are certain algorithms which are used in encryption which uh, if you enter some text or file into it so they convert it into a one way irreversible gibberish string that output string is known as a hash whenever you would enter the same message into that algorithm it would always produce the same gibberish set of characters or same random set of characters but the system is so complex that you cannot reverse engineer it it is not like encryption that you can use a certain key to convert the hash back into the original message so a blockchain or every block on the blockchain basically consists of three things one is the hash one is the previous hash and then there are multiple transactions when once all over here in the diagram each block only shows two transactions but in real world this is just an illustration in real world we have around 10 to 25 transactions on one block or you can say multiple transactions on a single block so once all the transactions are filled then the hash is calculated by converting all the transactions into a hashing algorithm now if you change the value like this is 0 multiplied by a a a a a a even if you slightly change this one of these a's into b then this value of hash a b c 1 2 3 would change and you would not be able to get it back so when, when if a hacker tries to alter a transaction on a block like he wants that instead of money going from a to b the money should end up in his account then obviously he'll have to change the value of the transaction or the details of the transaction and when he does that then this hash value would change and the blocks after this block would be unable to link to this because this value would change and they would be looking for this value to connect to hence all of the chain would be lost and it would be uh, recalibrated or re-recorded hence the hacker would not be able to uh, gain his purpose this is the first block in the chain and as you can see it does not has have a previous hash or previous block hash it's zero 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 because there is no block before this this is the first block in the chain hence it is known as the genesis block whereas rest of the blocks are one two three four and whatsoever every block contains the link to the previous block unless and until it is the genesis block now in exam you would get a question something like you would be given a blockchain and this previous block would be missing or and arrows would be drawn and you simply would have to write the value by looking at the hash of the previous block because the transactions value you cannot calculate calculating a hash is way beyond the scope of your syllabus so this only leaves us this that uh, you would be given a chain of blocks in exams and you would have to write down the previous block hash by looking at the previous block in the drawn chain each new user on the network gets a copy of all approved transaction on the network means it uh, the every new user gets a copy of the whole blockchain different types of information can be stored on a blockchain but so far the most common use has been as a ledger for financial transactions 
in bitcoin's case blockchain is uh, used in a de is used in a decentralized way so that no single person or group has control rather all the users collectively have control over the blockchain this is not, not just for bitcoin for each and every cryptocurrency the same is happening every cryptocurrency so far is decentralized decentralized blockchains are immutable that means they are irreversible and you cannot alter the data or the transaction which have been once recorded on the blockchain so this is a diagram to make you understand how blockchain works a wants to transfer money to b so the transaction is represented on a block that block is broadcasted to every member on the network all the members on the network validated and then it is linked on to the previously existing blockchain and as soon as the block the block is linked on to the blockchain b receives money from a into their wallet this process usually takes around 15 to 30 minutes because crypto currency the uh, transactions or the blocks of cryptocurrency are very heavily encrypted and their validation takes a lot of uh, resources from the network possible applications of blockchain in automotive consumers could use the blockchain to manage fractional ownership in autonomous cars means multiple people can buy a single car financial services faster cheaper settlements could save billions of dollars from transaction costs while improving transparency as you cannot alter the data vote they are, can be used in voting systems so that votes casted are very much transparent and they are irreversible and they are verifiable in healthcare patients encrypted health information could be shared with multiple providers without the risk of privacy breaches or without the risk of what you can say a data security or without the risk of that uh, the without any risk of uh, privacy without any privacy issues so this is it for our section 5.2 i hope you have understood everything feel free to contact me if you have any problem do give me comments so i know um, how was the lecture take care allah hafiz